Hello, this webinar will teach you how to add a product into your website on the Uniform Market Platform. There are six steps to this process. The first is to set up a manufacturer if you don't already have a manufacturer that exists that you're adding the product to, you create a new manufacturer. The next for each manufacturer is to set up the various option types and the option values for them. Examples of those are colors and sizes or fits. Next is you add the actual product. You add the general data about the product first, and then you go and you add your individual SKUs for that product, meaning it comes in white, small, white, medium, red, small, red, medium. And then you create and or assign existing categories to the product. The brands and manufacturers are also created and managed on a website using categories as well. The, assign, the last step, number six, is to assign it to uh, the store itself, your, either your public store or a private store. So with all of that in mind, let's begin. We can now go to a example store here uh, at Uniform Market called medical.uniformmarket.com. It's available um, <coughs> from our demo stores on the website. As you can see, there are general categories of products along here, and there are brands along here. Even the brands are based on categories. And then there are actual products. So if we were to click on an actual product, such as this shoe, the Naples, it then takes us to the product page where you see a picture of the product, you see swatches, you see uh, the descriptions, you see the name of the product, and you see the different um, colors that uh, the product comes in, you see the different sizes the product comes in, and all of these are the actual SKUs of the product. So how did all of this data get entered in there? Let's take a look. So remember, the first step is that we're going to um, create a manufacturer. First, though, you log in and um, go to your website uh, com slash admin, and then you log in. Once you're in your admin, the area of interest to us today is this row of functions right here. We're going to add a manufacturer. We're going to create the options for that manufacturer. We're going to create a product, and then we're going to add it to categories. Okay? So in each of your systems, there'll be a list of manufacturers that exist already that you may have Uniform Market feeding these products in and helping you manage the products for you from popular manufacturers in the industry. If, however, you're starting a new manufacturer that is not managed by Uniform Market, then you can simply add it yourself. So you would click Add Manufacturer. And you give the manufacturer a name. So today we will call it um, Good supplier okay so good supplier and we will give them a code of good sup or gsup so now i've added the manufacturer and that is all there is to adding a manufacturer we are now done with step one set up a manufacturer you only need to do this one time per manufacturer for each manufacturer they have their own set of options and values so now we go back here and under the options, as you can see up here in this menu, these options already exist. So for instance, for Dansko, there's already a color and size. For Landau, there's already color and actually a couple of different kinds of colors. There's an alpha sizing and then there's a different kind of sizing. These are all created depending on you know, the needs of the manufacturer's products. What are the different option types and values that the manufacturer uses to create their products? So let's add some new ones. I can do that from this button down here, or I can do it up here. I can add an option type. An option type is something like color. 
So I'm going to call it color. I'm going to give it an admin option type name of color as well. Why are there two different names? The option type name is actually what your shopper will see when they're shopping. It's called color. If, for, for instance, you needed to track a couple of different lists of types of colors, well, then you could name it something else in the admin here to help you keep track of it. Maybe these are colors, you know, solids and then you wanted to do a different one called colors prints. It all depends on what your needs are to format the products that you're trying to enter. In this case, we were going to keep it simple and just call it color and color. Now, what manufacturer are you building this new option type for? And we're going to go down to the one that we just created, which is called good supplier. And that is it to adding the option type. So now I'm just going to add the option. So now it is created. The system assumes that you want to add another one. Okay, If you want to go back and just work in the one that you just created, you go back up here, go to Good Supplier, and you'll see that it now has created color. I could click on that and start adding my colors. In this case, since it conveniently offered me another one, I'm just going to, oops, go back. I'm just going to go here and say, go to size, size. And again, I want to use this for the new manufacturer that I just created called Good Supplier, all the way down here at the bottom. So I add the option again, and so now I've added two. I'm satisfied with the two for now, so now I'm going to go up here to the actual options, go to Good Supplier, you see that we've now created color and size, and I'm going to click on color. So now that color has been created, it also offers me option um, to go and actually add the different option types, meaning red, white, navy, etc. It, once I use this option type in products, I could also quickly click here to see what products use this option type. For now, I'm going to go here and click on options. Again, a quick reminder, there's a distinction between the option type is color. The actual options are things like white, black, red. Now, I'm entering the name and the code as identical. If you're entering the products for a particular manufacturer and you want to track that they call white, you know, um, a code of one, three, five, that's fine. You can do that. Or even call it, you know, white dash one, three, five. So again, code uh, is an internal thing. It helps you keep track of more uh, data about the item that you're entering. Uh, you'll find that prevalent throughout the system. What is under name is almost always, or is always, what your shopper will see. So in this case, they see white. Okay, now I click update and it will add these three values to my page as well as, so see it added these three down here, as well as then uh, offer me five new blank rows where I could keep adding more. Anytime you see values on a page and blank rows, the blank rows are for adding new values into the system. You can tell whether a value has been added or not if it has a select box all the way on the left-hand side. Anytime you see lists of select boxes, you can highlight them all using the check plus sign. So I check that. It selects all three. Check minus unselects all three. So as you can imagine, once you have 100 different colors on a page, if you wanted to select them all for whatever reason, you could just use the check plus. If I were going to add swatches to the products, I would click right here. So if I wanted a black swatch, I would click here, and I would browse, find the file, and load the actual black swatch. For this training session today, I neglected to prepare some swatches, so <laughs> I apologize. Although here, let's just go here, and actually I could grab this black swatch by right-clicking on it, save image as, and then it's going to pop up a window that I could save the image to my hard drive. Save. So now it's right here on my hard drive. I could go over here and I could say, well, for this color black, I'm actually going to load that swatch right now. So I go to my desktop. I find that swatch. I open it. I upload the image. 
I select it, I select the image, and now this swatch will be associated with this color. All right, I'm going to update the page. Always remember to update. Say that again. Always remember to update. All right. We have now completed. Oh, no, we haven't. We only added items right now for the color. I added three different colors. Now I'm going to go here to size. Under good supplier, we had also added the option type of size. So now I click on options, and now I can add some sizes. So I can call it S for small, and then inside I could say small, or I could just do S. There's no rules here. This is just text. So I'm going to do S, M, L, XL, and 2XL. For today's demo, that will suffice. Now I update. Always remember to click Update. So I clicked update, and again, as you see, it offered me five more blank slots. I could add more, but it also added these values. It added these values, though, alphanumerically sorted. The system will always default to an alphanumeric sort. If you want your shoppers to see the data in a certain way, then you actually have to specify sorts on them. So that's this column right here. So you have to specify a sort. So in other words, when it displays this list, how do I want it to sort it? Well, I want the S to come first, then I want the medium, then I want the large, then I want the extra large, then I want the two extra large. Okay, so I've added sorts to all of those. I'm going to highlight the whole row of them and update them. It will still display them in the alpha sort order in the admin. You will see that once the shopper on the front end of the website, once we're done adding this product, you will see that it uh, displays it in the proper sort order on the pull down menu. That completes this number two of setting up option types and options. You only need to do this one time per option type, meaning color or size, and one time enter the values. Once you've created these, you can use these again and again and again every time you're adding a product for the manufacturer that you have created. Let's go see an example of what I just said. We're now going to go and add a product. We're going to start by adding the general data about the product. And then part two is actually creating the SKUs based on the option types and option values that we created up above. Let's take a look. So if I go back here to the dashboard, you'll see we've added a manufacturer. We've added their option types and some option values. You can always go back and add more option types. You can always go back and add more option values. You don't have to get all the colors and sizes right. Uh, typically, you just enter what you need to start entering products. As you enter more products, you find that you need more colors or variations on sizes or other types of options. You simply add them and then go back and rework, rework the product that you're trying to enter. To add a new product, you click right here under Products Add or up under the Product Menu. You can always get to Add New. So if I go to Add New, as you can see, it starts with just a very few points of information about the product. These are the basics of the product. Once you get the basics, it will open up all of the other types of things that you can add about a product. So in this case, I'm going to give it a product ID of good sup, just so I remember that it's from the good supplier, underscore, and then their style number, which let's pretend is 844. So the GSUP 844 we are now creating. And this is a polo shirt. That's just what they call it. So, and then what manufacturer is it? It is the good supplier. The manufacturer ID is different than my product ID. I'm just going to say that their ID is just 844. That's their style number. I'm not going to track inventory. I don't need to deal with quantity on hand. The basic price of this polo shirt is $15. Okay? Um, I'm going to have the opportunity to change my prices and adjust my prices based on many other criteria, among which is I'm going to be able to set my 2XL price as a different price from the other SKUs. But the base price, the most common price of this product, starts at $15. 
The product weighs, oh, I don't know. I don't, didn't get that information from the manufacturer, but it's a shirt, so I'm going to guess it's one pound. A pair of pants maybe is two pounds. A pair of boots, five pounds. You just use rules of thumb. I am going to want to show it on web. It is going to be part of my website. I could also choose to not display it on web until such time I'm done actually adding the product and then go back and click the on web button. So you can work on products without your customer seeing them and then when you're done entering them, click on web to show it on your website. Active Lock has to do with subscriptions, so we don't really need to worry about that today because we're adding our own product. So there's no subscriptions from the uniform market system for good supplier. So I don't need to worry about my full locks or my active locks. I want to charge shipping, yes, for this product. I'm not going to bother entering any keywords for this product. There's actually a more accurate way to help your shopper find products in the, the system called search filters. And I'll show you search filters in a minute. I'm not going to override the text table. What that means is that there is th this product, in this particular case, will be charged tax. Add the product. So now it's added the basic information about the product. And as you can see now, for this product polo shirt that I'm working on, I now have a lot more types of information that I can associate with the product. We are, again, still working in the general data about the product. In a minute, we're going to switch over and start working in the general SKUs. General is a, another way of saying generic. What is the general or generic or standard way that this manufacturer displays this product? Then you can assign this product to an individual store and change certain things from a general to a more specific piece of information relative to your public store or a private store. But for now, we're just working with the general data about the product. So we've entered a lot of this stuff up top here. Then we can talk about categories. We can talk about search filters. We can talk about product options. Let's start with product options, because that's fresh in our mind from what we just did by adding color and size as option types and option values. So now I'm going to click here to add, remove options. And I'm going to say, based on the list of option types for this manufacturer, because don't forget, up here, we specified which manufacturer this product was from, so it knew which option types. There could have been 3, 10, 20 different option types here. In this case, there are only the two that we've already created for this manufacturer. So I'm going to select color and size and say OK. And now, whenever we go to talk and build SKUs, to talk about and build SKUs for this product, it's going to consider and require us to associate different colors and sizes with this product. If you forget this step, you will not be able to build your general SKUs accurately. You will only be able to build a SKU with a price, and it will not display properly. Next, I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to add a description. I can either just enter the description in HTML right down here, or I can use a HTML editor by clicking there, and it pops up an HTML editor. And then it's a much friendlier way that you can enter descriptions. So I can say features, and it's um, great colors, and I talk about the colors, and great fabrics and I talk about the fabrics or you know whatever it is that you're going to say about the product that's going to entice the shopper to think it's the bee's knees and purchase it. And you can decorate this. You can change the sizes of fonts. You can do all of those wonderful things. Once you're ready, you click Changes. It adds it down here as HTML. Just leave that as is. If you ever want to edit it again, you click on Use HTML Editor. The different parts of the page, again, if we go back to an example product of this Naples shoe, to remind you, we see a description here, okay, and we can add for other items on the page, though, that this particular product is not showing. For instance, I could add a description above the whole product up here. It would shift everything down a bit. I could add a description down below here. It would add that down there. And those are handled here in the product header or the product footer. All right, for now, I am done entering my description, though, so I'm going to click Update. Always remember to click Update.
So now I have entered the product options. I have created a basic description of the product. I am going to now move over here and add a couple of pictures. I have already prepared pictures to load up here, but you're probably saying to yourself, well, how do I know what size pictures I should add? Well, you can remind yourself by clicking up here on the support button. So I'm going to click on that, open it in a new tab here, and right at the support page for Uniform Market, you'll see something called what are the standard sizes for product images. You click on that here, and we remind you that the thumbnails are 150 pixels, maximum height and width, and the large image on the actual product page is 320 pixels, and we like to use 60 by 60 pixels for the color swatches. Let's go back here, and in my photo thumbnail, um, I'm going to click on the little folder and I'm going to upload my own picture here. I'm going to browse my hard drive and I have these two pictures that I've prepared already. One that I gave a code of uh, Acme underscore five six seven eight underscore SM, the SM, so that it reminds me this is the small picture and then I select the image. You can name these pictures whatever you want. The only rule would be don't use spaces in the names. Make sure that if you want a space, use a dash or an underscore. Otherwise, avoid spaces at all costs. So that's for the thumbnail picture. For the large image, which is the one that's actually used on the product page itself, the thumbnails are used on categories, I'm going to load another picture that's been sized correctly. That's called the same thing only it has an LG for large, and then I'm going to select that image. So now I've got two images associated with the product. I'm going to what? That's right, I'm going to update. So now I hit update, and it's got this information saved. You're just about done with everything that has to do with general data. The last step for general data is to add it to categories. I'm going to do that step last. Okay, because once again, the various steps are to, uh, we've gone through and now we've added the general data about the product, okay? The only thing we haven't added in the general data area is assigning it to categories. First though, I'm going to go and create SKUs and then come back to the whole concept of adding it to categories. To create SKUs, we now go to the general SKUs area. As you recall, we had assigned the ver the two types of options to this product. We had assigned color and size. If it only comes in sizes, we could have just assigned size. If it only comes in colors, we could have just assigned colors. In this case, we're using both. So now I'm just going to create my SKUs. So I've, I think this was a product 844, so I'm going to say this is 844. Um, and if the manufacturer has UPC codes or specific SKUs, you would be entering those here. If they don't and you want to just make some up, you can just make them up. So in this case, I'm going to make it up and say this is 844 black, you know, small. Or let's just say BS, okay, black small. And I'm going to make that for the SKU and for the manufacturer SKU. And then I'm going to say that this is black and this is size small. And I do want it to appear on web, so I'm going to check this. And it's going to use the same price as my general data price. So I'm not going to check anything here, and it's going to fill in that price for me when I click Update. For the next one, I'm going to copy this into here, change it to Medium. Copy that one into here, and change this to Medium. Okay. And then you can just continue that process. So now I'm going to make this large, this extra large, and this two extra large. Very good. And then actually here I can start adding my whites instead. So I'm going to change this to white small white small. So this will be white small. And now I need to go back and change these to large 
extra large and 2XL. But my 2XL is more than the $15 I entered in general data. So if I'm going to make all these as on web. And then for the price, I'm going to say I'm going to check this box and lock it and say that for 2XL, it's actually $18. Okay, and then I can do the same thing for my whites. Small, medium, large, extra large, 2XL. Then you copy and paste these in. And again, change these all to white. Change this to the medium, the large, the extra large, and the 2XL. These do not have to be in order. I just happen to be entering them in order. You can enter them in any way you want. You can always go back and add other SKUs. Once you've created a set of SKUs, you can add more SKUs at any time. Then I go here, and I say that I want them to be on web, and then... I'm going to change this to Excel also to $18. Then I'm going to update. Always remember to update. Just entering them into this page does not send it back upstairs to your website on the server and store all the information. Notice how once I clicked update, as I promised, it used the base price of $15 that we had entered in the general data and filled all those in. And then it locked the prices for my two XLs in white or black at $18. Again, the system sorted it. Unlike how I entered the information, it resorted this alphabetically. That's okay because the shopper, because we before we set the options for the sizes to sort based on how we wanted from small, medium, large, XL, two XL to that order, we've already set that elsewhere. So that's how the product will show up. That is how you create SKUs. So we have now added the product. We created some SKUs. Remember how it does require those option types. So you need to create those and add those to assign those to the product in the general data area. Okay, next is assigning some categories. We can either create new manufacturer categories because we've just added a supplier called Good Supplier, and or we can assign it to some uh, categories that have already been created, some general categories. So let's go back to general data here. And we can scroll down to categories and click Add Categories. If we had already added categories and we want to remove it from some categories, guess what? You, you click on Remove Categories. At this point, we're going to click Add Categories. A manufacturer's categories, a manufacturer on the front end of the website, so once again, let me go back here. These are just categories. Nothing more complicated than that. So somebody at some point added a category called Dansko Shoes and then added categories underneath that category called Women's Collection or Men's Collection and then eventually assigned the products to, different, to these different categories. You only want to assign products to categories that should actually have categories. Well, what does that mean? If I click on Dance Go Shoes, I'm going to see three subcategories. Don't assign products at this level. This level is only to help organize all of the different categories of Dance Go Shoes. So this is what we call a top-level category. Dance Go Shoes is at the top level. And underneath that level is a category called Women's Collections. I click on Women's Collections. And that's actually showing me more different kinds of categories. Well, do I want stapled clogs? Or do I want Sanibel? Then I can click on stapled clogs, and it's going to show me actual products. So these are all the different kinds of stapled clogs. So we've gone three categories in already. We had a top level of Dance Go Shoes. We had a woman's collection category. We had a stapled clogs category. And then we get to the various stapled clogs products. Now from these products, then I can actually click on an actual product. So the Ingrid product should only be assigned to one category, stapled clogs. 
don't assign it to women's collections or to dance go shoes, just assign it to stapled clogs. Let's go look at an example of creating a new set of categories. So if I go here and I'm looking at these various categories, I can pick one of these categories to assign this product to, or I can start creating new categories. I can say under the brands area, I want to create a new category. Oh, well, actually, from this view, my apologies. You're just adding to the actual categories. Okay, so if we wanted to go back and add this shirt to the general categories, then we would add it to a general category such as um, tops. So I could say add to this category. And I could then click and add it to another category. In this case, I'm just going to close it and see the results of what I did. So now, as you see, it's added it to the category called tops right here. I could remove it from the category by clicking here and selecting which category to remove it from. If I wanted to add more categories, for the manufacturer good supplier, I actually need to go here to my category manager and build new categories. That is kind of a whole lesson unto itself. But I selected category manager. I'm going to click left navigation. I'm going to determine where I want to add this new set of categories. And in this case, I want to do it under brands. So I'm going to edit the brands categories. And now uh, I see a list of them here. I'm going to add a new one. So I'm going to create a new category below, create and add new, and I'm going to call it good supplier. And I can enter a category description, or in this case, I'm just going to add the category itself. So now, as you can see over here, there's a category called good supplier. And now I'm actually going to go into that category and edit it. And under the, now I have this category, which is underneath brands. It's a category called good supplier. I'm actually going to create another category to go underneath good supplier. So I'm going to create this, and I'm going to call it shirts. And I'm going to add that category now. So now I have a category called shirts underneath the category called good supplier, which is underneath the category of brands. Okay, I can add another category underneath. So if I were going to add pants next, then I could have a category of pants and a category of shirts, both underneath the good supplier category. And that is how somebody created initially this whole Dansko one, where it's first it's Dansko is the top level one. Then was a category underneath it called women's collections. And underneath women's collections was all these other categories. So again, we could have also added more underneath shirts and said we want underneath shirts, we're going to edit it and add polo shirts and tactical shirts and work shirts. In this case, I'm going to stop here at this level. We added good supplier. We added a category called shirts. Now I'm going to close this. And I'm going to go back to editing the actual product we were working on. Now, it held on to my search here because before I took a break, but <laughs> what I had done was entered a, a search for good supplier, and it's showing me all the products from good supplier. If that is not there when you first get there, you may see uh, all of these search. You may see all of the products in your store, and then you just have to filter to find the product that you were editing before. You can also keep multiple tabs open and work on supply uh, categories in one tab and work on editing the products in another tab. So right now I'm editing back to this polo shirt and I'm going to go down to categories and I'm going to click on add categories. So I want to assign it to more categories. Now the one that I just created is underneath brands. 
So I go to brands and I view the subcategories of brands and I scroll down and can I find, aha, there's the one that I just added. It's called good supplier. And I don't want to add it at that level. I want to add it to the shirts category. So I click on shirts, on, on the subcategories for good supplier. I see the shirts category and I say add to this category. And now I close this. So it has now added this product to two. I have now added this product to two categories. One to the general category called tops, the other to the category called shirts. All right. And that is assigning to categories. You saw how we created a few manufacturer categories, and we also assigned it to one of the general categories called tops. There's only one step left and then you're done and that is to assign it to an actual store within your uniform market platform you may be running one or many stores we created the general data here we created the general SKUs. The last step is this tab right here which is to assign the product to a store so in this case I have three stores. I have a store called Demo2, I have a store called Eva Scrubs, and I have a public store. In your setup, you may only have one store at this time, public store. Or you may be running lots of stores for hospitals, law enforcement agencies, restaurants, whatever the case may be. In this case, I'm going to assign it just to the one store, public store. So I check this box right here, and I hit Update. The system is now taking all of the general data and general SKUs and rolling them in to my public store. If for whatever reason I was going to change the data for one of my other stores, I could lock it here and change the data. In this case, I want it all in my public store exactly how I've entered it and how it appears in general data and general SKUs. So this step is complete once I've assigned it to the public store. Let's go see what we just did. Now if I go back to my public store, and I go up here to search, or actually let me refresh the page. So I'm clicking on the home button here. It refreshes the page. And look how now under brands, there's a top level category called good supplier underneath brands. And there's also two subcategories, pants and shirts. Again, the system sorted alphabetically. It put P before S. If I wanted to go back and change that, I could go and change the sort orders on the categories. In this case, I'm fine with pants and shirts. Then I'm going to click on the actual good supplier shirts category and it now shows me that there's one product assigned to that category. I'm going to click on that product and this is what we just created. We created this, we loaded this image, we only added one color swatch. Remember we added three, we added three colors, black, white, and red, but we actually only added one swatch. If you wanted swatches to appear for the other colors, you would go and add those back where we added in the option type and click on options. So it has added notice uh, for black, these SKUs, and it has correctly displayed them in this order, small, medium, large, extra large, 2XL, because that's how we set the order. It is displaying the $18 for the 2XL because that's what we had set. If I change to my white color, it will go and grab all of those SKUs and display them as well. And that completes the six steps of how to add a product in the Uniform Market Platform, set up the manufacturer, add the option types and option values, add the actual product, also known as adding the general data, create the SKUs, also known as the general SKUs, this does require that above step of the option types. We assigned the product to categories. We took the time to go and create a few new manufacturer categories, but those can be reused now for the next shirt that we add. We also assigned it to a general category of just tops. And then lastly, we assigned it to the store. Have questions? Click on the chat support in your admin or email support at uniformmarket.com. A reminder that we also, every Wednesday, have a free training, group training session at 10 Central. You go here, you log in, you call in, and you can ask all the questions that you have. Thank you.